Hello, we're going to look at how to construct a model in ArcMap. But before we can start ArcMap and constructing the model, there's a few things that we need to get accomplished. The first thing we're going to do is look at the latitude and longitude for the IMET Center. Uh, we're going to use that as the base for where we're going to look at the distance to grocery stores in the state of Wisconsin. So over here you see the web page where I'm getting the latitude and longitude for the IMET Center. Now you can use something else if you care to. You could use your home, you could use a campus like Elkhorn or over at Racine or Kenosha, but what we're going to do is we're going to take this data and we're going to put it into a Excel spreadsheet in order to import that into ArcMap. So over here I have constructed a spreadsheet already with the latitude and longitude. Now you see over here I have a negative 87 for the longitude that needs to be negative in order to be able to get the coordinates right. Now what I'm doing is starting ArcMap Administrator and what this is doing, it's allowing me to go ahead and get the proper tools. Now, uh, going ArcMac Administrator, and over here I'm going to go ahead and check out some licenses for different portions of ArcMap that I need to use. So over here I have a couple of items I need to check out. You can see I have Desktop Advanced, and it's pulling up other items I want to go ahead and check out. So over here I have 3D Analysts and Geostatistical Analysis. And what I did is I started the ArcMap and ArcGIS Administrator and go check this out. I've already done this. Uh, you can do that if you need to, but since I've already done it, I'm not going to uh, have to restart them. But uh, if you need to, you can check those boxes and check out the appropriate licenses. You can see that they're good for 30 days. So I'm canceling out of this. And then we can go ahead and get started. Now, what I'm doing now is going to ArcMap. I'm going to start it up now that I have some of the preliminary stuff done. And what I'm going to do is now bring in the layers that I need in order to start the model building. Now, you see I've already done this before, so the items that you see in front of you are already once I've done, uh, I'm not going to use those. I'm going to start from scratch. So I'm canceling out of this and going to start with a blank sheet. So what I'm going to do now is bring in some data. So this is from ArcGIS Online. You don't need to sign in. Uh, but what I'm going to do is look for groceries. Now this is going to be bringing in all the grocery stores in the U.S., now I'm searching for it, and here's one from U.S. Grocery Stores in Esri. So that's uh, the data source I want to use, and this is all for all the United States. It's going to take quite a while to load because there's an awful lot of data there. So when you get this, you want to go ahead and add it in. It's going to take a while to load. So now you see it's starting to load, and over here some states are starting to pop up. You can see that we have Virginia and Michigan, and some of the other ones are now starting to begin to populate. All the little black dots that you see are grocery stores that are being populated. So you can see there is quite a few data points in here. And in the lower left corner, you can see that it says that it's putting in the background, that it is drawing the background. So as long as it's still processing, it will say that it's drawing the background. But we can see now that we're getting more and more states being brought in. Over here is Iowa. And it's going to take a few minutes to populate all this. Now, this is the data that we're going to use as background information, what we're going to do is construct a model that's going to 
take this information, clip it to the state of Wisconsin, and so you just get the grocery source for the state of Wisconsin, and then we're going to bring in another tool and look at the distance to the IMET Center. As I mentioned before, you could pick a different spot in order to uh, be able to look, do the distance. We're going to build a model to do this automatically, so you don't have to do it time after time if you wanted to repeat it. But now you see that we're getting further along in populating the layer that now we have Nevada being populated and over Florida, Missouri still waiting to be done, and Minnesota, but we're getting pretty close to getting things done. So now you can see that it's done processing, that that has left, uh, the during the background is gone. Now I'm going to go in here and bring in the data for the IMET Center. I already had a spreadsheet before, and I put this in the download section. So you can see that it's in the downloads, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up the specific spreadsheet that I made, which is IMET, and it's a .xlsx sheet. So I'm going to look for it and then bring it in. So here it is that uh, looking in the download section, you might have it in a different spot, went a little bit too far there. Now I have over here, here's my spreadsheet. And now I'm bringing it in, adding that. Now I do have a tab over here that I called IMET. And when you look here, as I've enabled, labeled my tab IMET so that it is something I know that I'm bringing in the right tab. So I'm clicking on that now to bring it in. I'm adding it. And over here I now have that information. What I need to do is bring in the XY data. So I'm doing that. Now you can see over here I have the latitude and longitude brought in. And it is bringing it in with the same coordinate system that I have in the U.S. grocery stores I brought in, so I need to change this. I could edit it if I wanted to, but I don't really need to at this point, so I'm just going to click OK here and use it. Z data over here is for elevation. I don't need that, so I have the X and Y data, the latitude and longitude that I brought in. So we're OK with that, and clicking OK. Now it is added in, and you don't need to worry about this. You can click OK. It doesn't have an object ID. But now I have the data point for IMET, but it kind of stays in the, um, melds into the background. Over here, you can see it just slightly. We're going to go ahead and change it so it stands out more. So I'm going to click on the item, and it's going to be where I'm going to look for a star, and I'm going to change it from green to red so it stands out more. So here's Mars Red, and clicking OK, and now it's redrawing that section, and you should see there it is. I can now see the IMET Center standing out more than what it had been previously. So I've now got most of the data that I need to in order to be able to start working on the background on the uh, model. What I'm going to do now is bring in the state of Wisconsin counties map, uh, so that I could clip the data from all U.S. grocery stores to just the state of Wisconsin. So I have typing in here Wisconsin counties. I'm looking for one that the state legislature has put together. So I'm searching for that. I'm going to scroll down. And over here on the right-hand side at the bottom, I have Wisconsin counties. And it's done by the state legislature. So I'm going to go ahead and add that. And when I click on that, I've now got my counties added in. And I've got most of the layers that I'm going to need to use. So in a little bit here, it should be drawing in the state of Wisconsin. And what I've got is now I have items on the left hand, uh, sorry, on the right hand side over here, I've got catalog and the arc tools. If you need to go and get those, you can go over to geoprocessing and bring those in. But now I'm going to create in arc catalog is the section where I can go ahead and begin the model. So over here under the default geo database, you could put in a different geo database if you need to that I'm going to come down here into the toolbox and I'm going to import, uh, make a new, I, well, I don't need to make a new toolbox. I already have that toolbox. What I'm going to do is the existing toolbox. I already have some models I built before. I'm going to build another one over here. So I'm going to do a right click 
and where it says new, I'm going to go ahead and make a new model. So there I've created that, and I can. it's now called model two. I can call it something different if I want to. So at this point, I now I'm beginning to do my model. I'm going to drag in the elements that I need to in order to do the modeling. These are the, going to be inputs to the tools I'm going to use. So over here I have dragging in the state of Wisconsin. So there's my input. And also I need to drag in the U.S. grocery store. So those are the two inputs. Now what I'm going to need to do is to look at getting my tools under analysis tools and I'm going to do extract and when I do that I'm going to look at clip so I'm going to drag that in. So now that my clip is coming in this is going to take the US grocery stores and clip them so that all I have displayed is the state of Wisconsin. So but it's looking for input. So what I can do on this one over here is I've double clicked on it and now I have the inputs that I need my input features are going to be what I am going to use as the basis for my data. And then the clip features are what I'm going to extract the data to. So over here, I'm bringing in all the U.S. grocery stores. So I'm going to click on Add That. That's one input. And now I'm going to go in and the clip features, this is what it's going to do the clipping, is going to be the state of Wisconsin. So now I click the little down arrow, and it's going to be where I can bring in the layer for the Wisconsin and bring that in. Over here I have what I can call my output. So over here I'm going to call it something a little bit different. Uh, I don't like that name. I'm going to call it something a little bit different. So I'm going to call it video clip so that it distinguishes it from one of the other things I've done previously. Over here I have XY tolerance. I don't really need to do anything there if I don't want to. That's if the data is not all that <coughs> precise, but we're okay with that, so don't have to worry about that. I have all the input information I need. I click OK, and I should now have where I have my input. And you see I have my video clip as my output over here. And now it's turned orange, which says that I do have all my inputs for it. And I'm going to have an output as video clip. So I'm going to come over and do the model. I'm going to validate the model, make sure that everything's functional. And it didn't give me any error, any error messages, so I'm OK. And now I can go ahead and run it or run the entire model. It doesn't matter which one I do. So if I click run, you can see the box that comes up. The clip tool turns red, indicating that it's running. This is going to be about 25, 30 seconds in order to get it done. So now it is running, and it's going to have a shadow underneath it when it is done running. And this is going to be the clip, video clip is going to be the layer that I produce when it's finished. So we'll wait for this to get done. And... It's still processing. There we go. Now it's finished. You see the drop down shadow afterwards and it has all that done so I can get out of the model that I'm running. And I'm going to now take the video clip and I can add it as a layer to my map. So I'm adding that to the display. And when I click it, you can see now I have it. Now it's redrawing the whole map and I don't really need to do and wait for that. So I'm going to get rid of that model or minimize it for the time being and over here I have my Wisconsin County is being drawn and I am going to stop drawing the US grocery stores and what it should be doing over here now is just drawing the map of Wisconsin with the grocery stores there and with the IMET showing because it has run that model so what I have is the input as being the US grocery stores and I've clipped it to Wisconsin so when I bring up the Layer over here, the video clip, it's going to just show me the state of Wisconsin. And what I'm doing is I'm going to make the grocery stores little tiny dots. And we'll be able to go with that. And now it should be redrawing that layer. And we're going to see it come up here in a bit. So over here, I'm going to zoom to the layer. And we're going to have this being okay as the first step in making the model. 
and right now I'm processing this. It's going to be okay. There we go. It popped right up, and now I have the whole state of Wisconsin. You can see that all the grocery stores are tiny little dots. The Red Star over here is the I'm at center, and now we're going to have to go ahead and build the model a little bit more. And I'm bringing in some other tools over here. So I have my model number two. I'm going to go ahead and edit that model. So I'm doing a right click over here and I'm going to go ahead and edit it. And you see, I bring it back up again. Now, one thing I talked about before uh, sorry, I didn't do before, is that we can go ahead and use some tools here to actually center it and make it uh, fit nicely into the window. This is one over here, so I'm adjusting the layout. And then I come over here as I'm going it to the full extent. So now I have it so it looks tidy. And now I'm going to come over and I'm going to grab the additional tool I'm going to use. So what I want to do now is I've already used the clip. What I'm going to come down here to is going ahead and bringing in where I can have a point distance under the... <coughs> now I brought that in and now I'm looking for my inputs. So I've brought the point distance in. It's going to need a couple of inputs. And you can see that I hover above it. It gives me the features that I need. So what I'm going to do is, if I double-click in it now, I should be able to bring it in and get the distance from IMET. That's going to be what I'm going to have as one of my inputs. So we're going to now put the data into the point distance, and we have an output table that's going to make when I run this modeling. So over here, you see that I have to have input features. Input features are what I'm going to use as the items where I'm calculating the distance. So if I double click on this, I'm going to go ahead and get my inputs. And we'll be able to go ahead and continue building the model. So you see I have my input features. And I'm going to click the little down arrow over here. And what I need to do is Click on here as the IMET. That's the, what I'm going to have is my input feature. That's where I'm calculating my distance to. My features that I'm going to look at the distance to are going to be the other items over here. When I'm looking at the new features, this is where I'm going to click and use the Wisconsin Groceries, the video clip. And over here is that I have an output table. I can call it whatever I would like to. So I'm going to rename it over here. And don't worry about the ActiveX controls. Uh, what I'm going to do is rename it so that I have something a little bit different. And I'm going to call it IMET Groceries. So distinguish it from what I've done already previously. And then down here is the item that I need. and over here is this going to be calculated in decimal degrees, but I don't want that. I want it in miles. So I'm clicking and bringing that in. Now I've decided to go over here as 30 mile is the radius. I'm looking for any grocery stores that are within a 30 mile radius. So we're going to now build the model. You see that now it turned orange. It has all the inputs that it needs. So now what I'm going to do is, you can see I have the inputs. I'm going to run the or validate the model after I get it nicely placed in the window over here. And now I have the clip is going to be the first feature it's going to run. Then it's going to go ahead and take the video clip, bring in the IMET center and look at the distance that I've specified and then produce an output file that says IMET groceries. And you can see my input features for that second tool that I brought in. So what I'm going to do now is come over here to the model, and I can go ahead and validate it. looks fine. And now I can go ahead and do the model and run it. 
And it's going to take a little bit of time in order to process it. Now you can see that my clip tool is turning red. And you can see the in the window over here it's running. And this is going to take about 20 some odd seconds in order to process it. Then it's going to move on to looking at the groceries that are within 30 miles of IMET with the second tool that I brought in, the point distance. So it's still processing it. And it should be a little bit longer. Okay, now it's done. Now you can see that I have the drop-down window uh, shadows below it. So I now have a table that is built with all the grocery stores that are within 30 miles of IMET. And what I'm going to do over here is also bring this into the layers, the windows over here. So now I have the table I just brought into my model that I built, the map. And I'm going to save this. I'm going to have this as a different model. So I'm going to call it video. And let's see, I need to have it all with a, <coughs> what's called worse so was video underscore demo. And it's good. Now I've saved it. So I can get out of this if I want to. And whoop. So I've got to close it out. I've saved my model. Now this is the map that I've produced, but I'm going to go over here and look at the table and bring that up and show you that. I do have the grocery stores close to I met that uh, within 30 miles. I'm going to open up that table. Uh, it's still having a little bit of problem processing it all because of the great volume of data I have. So over here now it has, here's my table. And you can see over here it has them all listed in distances. The model has now run and clipped everything so that I have all the grocery stores that are within a 30 mile radius of IMET. Now you can make it within 30 miles of your home or you could have done it for some other place. You could have made it 50 miles, 100 miles, whatever you'd like. So this is how you would build a model. Now what I want to show you is I do have the model saved in the toolbox over here. I now have it as called video underscore demo. And what I want you to do in order to hand in your assignment when you do this is to go ahead and save it as a map package. So here is share as map package. And so I'm going to, you could put it on the C drive. So I have it over here under Documents in ArcGIS. I'm going to call it something different than Untitled. And let's see, what should I call it over here? Okay. Um, let's see. What would be a good name for it? Um, I'm still waiting for it to process a little bit. Here we go. I'm going to call it video and underscore demo underscore map. So now I'll be able to locate it. This is what I'm going to save as a map package. This is when it gets saved on your C drive or if you want to save it to your drive on the online. That's what I want you to provide. But you see when now when I went ahead and tried to save it, it said, oh, I've got some problems. I need to put in some descriptions over here for my map. So the map package, I'm going to call it, the summary is I met in groceries and demo. So my tag is going to be type in I met, whoop, and then go and another tag I'm putting here is groceries. And then I need a description. And when I type in here, it's going to be model, building, demo. So I have everything done. If I click Analyze again, everything disappears. I have all the relevant information. Now I could just click as Share. Now it's going to take a while to process this. Uh, that's not that quick. It's going to be about 19 or 20 meg, if I remember correctly, that it has an awful lot of information there. So I have to save my map again. It's looking for me to save it. So... Here I go, clicking save, and it wants me to call it something again. Okay, um, hmm. Untitled, no, I don't want to save it as untitled. 
let's see over here, I call it IMET Groceries. And modeling or model, and now I'm clicking and saving it. So now it's going to be processed. This is going to take a few minutes to so go ahead and get done. But this is the Mac, sorry, the map package that you need to submit. And when it gets done processing, uh, you can save it on your C drive, like I mentioned, or if you want to save it online, uh, this is what you're going to provide for your assignment. And you see it's just cranking away and processing it. And it's popping up a window over here. And it says, I'm at, okay, uh, ArcGIS. This is where it's stored at, ArcGIS. And I'm at Groceries Model. This is the model that I just built, uh, but it's still processing away. So you see over here, it's got quite a few meg, and it's still thinking about putting together all the package. So this is, like I said, it is going to take a while in order to process it all. And let's see how it does. Should take just another minute or so to get done. And then we're going to be finished, and then we could submit the map package. Should have an extension of .mpk for you. And let's see, it's going. It does take quite a bit of time in order to get this finished. So let's see here, come on, and let's get her done. But this is the final step, so I'm almost done with building the model. And once this is done, then uh, the video is over with, and this is the assignment that I want you guys to go ahead and do. So you see over here I have 17 megabits, quite a big one over here. Yeah, it's not responding, but it's finishing up packaging it. So what I did is I stored it in uh, C Drive, Documents, ArcGIS, and what I have down here at the bottom, you can see that I have a video demo map, the last item down there, as the map package. That's what I'm going to want you to submit. So when you see the last item down here, this is what you're going to have to uh, get and submit. Uh, so it is successfully created the map package. Here's where you're going to be able to find it. So it says it succeeded. I'm all done with the map package. That is the what you're going to turn in. Now over here is I should be able to close out the arc map and then just open the up the map package. It'll have all the data stored. What a map package does is stores all the data so that um, if you just have it stored as a map, it loses its connection to the data. So we want it as a map package, so I should be able to close out this model. And what I do is that then I will be able to open up a map package and all the stuff will be there. So when you submit it, I can open it up and check that you correctly did the model building. So over here, I'm clicking on this, opening up Arc Map. And when it does that, it should have the model and then it should also have the uh, sorry, open up the map. It should have the model that we just did. So over here, it is cranking away. And it has a default database over there on the upper right. And indeed, there it is. And so I'm going to be looking at over here in the default database that did you correctly build the model? This is what I want you to do. So over here is I'm at Groceries, the model that I asked you to build. The video clip is the end result of the first part of the model. Uh, when you ran it and it clipped all the groceries from the U.S. to Wisconsin. So, whoops, uh, that should conclude all of the demo that I had for you. Um, Hopefully that's all been clear enough, and this is what the assignment is. So uh, we're all finished here now, and hope that you uh, can do a successful model run.